Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Uh, the ruling came out earlier today. It is late in the afternoon out here on the left coast. I am at Security Gun Club, Washington's nicest indoor shooting facility, right here in Woodenville, Washington. And I have had an opportunity to get through all of Miller v. Bonta, as we know, a huge, huge ruling, a ruling that we actually expected that should not come as a surprise to any of us, but there is a lot to take from it. We're going to have to dive right in. I'm going to try to pull some nuggets out so that you guys don't have to geek out through all 80 pages. Let me do that for you. So today, let's spend a few minutes and let's have some exciting news and let's talk about Judge Benitez strikes down assault weapon bans again. Okay, so exciting news. Of course, I'm late to the party. I know a lot of my other colleagues out here in the YouTubeverse have already got their videos out. I try to run a law practice during the day and I get to these things when I can get to them. We are talking about all 80 pages of Miller v. Bonta. I've had a chance to go through it, did some tabs here, did my homework. Uh, this is, yet again, Judge Benitez's second time striking down assault weapon bans. This is California's assault weapon ban. There's a lot to take from it. Uh, this is not an unexpected opinion. As we know, in both Duncan v. Bonta as well as Miller v. Bonta, Judge Benitez had previously struck down those bans. He interestingly had authored two theories. One was the old balancing test, which was then chucked out by the Bruin Court, and the other one was more on a text and history test. And he basically had ruled both with assault weapon bans and magazine bans that, hey, doesn't matter what theory I use, you lose under all of them. Now, I'm just going to pull some of the nuggets from this 80 pages so you can understand. I will tell you that there is a huge amount of this opinion that is actually quite similar to Duncan v. Bonta. Why? Well, because we're dealing with the same issue. We're dealing with the common use test. Okay, first announced in Heller, absolutely reaffirmed in cases such as Catano and Bruin and McDonald. But this is the actual rule of law that governs and why assault weapon bans are in fact unconstitutional. Judge Benitez pointed out, the California legislature at a time in the past when the lower courts did not recognize an individual's right to keep firearms and in a state that has no constitutional analog to the Second Amendment, balanced that interest above and against its law-abiding citizens who wanted these firearms for self-defense. But of course, as the court points out, that's the old test. We have a new test now. That was then. Today, the Supreme Court has very clearly ended modern interest balancing when it comes to the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment, the court said, is the very product of an interest balancing by the people, and it surely elevates above all other interests the right of law-abiding, responsible citizens to use arms for self-defense. So with that framework in place, Judge Benitez then goes through a very long, long and thorough analysis of all of the text and history and historical analogs that could justify a ban of this if any such exist. Judge Benitez also pointed out, California's assault weapon ban takes away from its residents the choice of using an AR-15 type rifle for self-defense. Is it because modern rifles are used so frequently for crime? No. The United States Department of Justice reports that in the year 2021, in the entire country, 447 people were killed with rifles of all types. From this, one can say that based on the national population of 320 million people in the United States, rifles of any kind, including AR-15s, were used in homicides only 0.0000014% of the time. Put differently, if 447 rifles were used to commit 447 homicides and every rifle-related homicide involved an AR-15, it would mean that of the approximately 24,400,000 AR-15s in the national stock, less than 0.0000132% were used in homicides. It begs the question, what were the other AR-15 rifles used for? The only logical answer is that 24,399,553 or 99.9999 85% of AR-15s were used for lawful purposes. Don't you just love when the math does the argument for you? 
Now, and again, as much as California tried to keep injecting this interest balancing the test, the court was having none of it. The state of California points that its assault weapon ban, the law challenged here, promotes an important public interest of disarming some mass shooters, even though it makes criminals of law-abiding residents who insist on acquiring these firearms for self-defense. Nevertheless, more than that is required to uphold the ban. The discussion that follows will sound repetitive to astute readers of this court's decision in Duncan v. Bonta, many of the same arguments and historic laws are relied on in both cases. And then, of course, Judge Benitez goes through the usual suspects of arguments that we see from the state of California and many of these other states that are advancing civilian disarmament, including trying to conflate the common use test, where we do have a tradition of banning firearms which are dangerous and unusual, and trying to conflate that with saying that we had a tradition of banning firearms which are dangerous or unusual. Judge Benitez was quick to point out that the state would advocate such a position is disheartening. Justice Alito took pains to point out that this is a conjunctive test. As the per curiam opinion recognizes, this is a conjunctive test. A weapon may not be banned unless it is both dangerous and unusual. If Heller tells us anything, it is that firearms cannot be categorically prohibited just because they are dangerous. And of course, then the court further went on to state, in Heller, the Supreme Court said the firearms that are protected are firearms that are not dangerous and unusual and typically possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes like self-defense. This court assumes that the Supreme Court does not use language frivolously that it says what it means and it means what it says. The dangerous and unusual test is the test that this court will apply. Now, of course, the state of California argued, well, wait a second, let's so what if we ban the AR-15s? They can go out and buy other rifles and you see the same argument with magazines. So we ban magazines that have more than 10 rounds. They can still go out and get magazines that hold at least 10 rounds. As Justice Benitez pointed out, Falling back on an old recycled justification, the state says that its ban should stand because a person can have as many other rifles, shotguns, and pistols as one wants. The problem is, is that the alternative remain argument has no limiting principle and would justify incremental firearm bans until there is only a single shot derringer remaining for lawful self-defense. Judge Benitez also goes through the whole conflation of, well, perhaps firearms are perhaps better used for military use. He pointed out that, listen, if they're good enough for military use, they are good enough for militia use. And if they're good enough for militia use, they are good for individual citizen use. Ultimately, what this comes down to is could the United States government establish through historical analogs that we as a society have accepted banning entire classes of firearms? The court pointed out, in the United States, with its long tradition of gun ownership, there are no historical laws prohibiting simple possession of any type of firearm until long after the 1868 adoption of the 14th Amendment. In fact, as it turns out, when it comes to banning types of firearms, there really is no historical tradition whatsoever. As the court pointed out, it is remarkable to discover that there were no outright prohibitions on keeping or possessing guns, no laws of any kind. Based on a close review of the state's law list and the court's own analysis, there are no founding era categorical bans on firearms in this nation's history. Though it is the state's burden, even after having been offered a clear opportunity to do so, the state has not identified any law anywhere at any time between 1791 and 1868 that prohibited simple possession of guns. And listen, the judge got his wax in on the state of California because they had asked to reopen this case and they'd employed all of these historical experts to come in and help explain to the good judge how history works, but they were unable to find anything even remotely similar to what it was that they were proffering here. And as the court put it, because a law criminalizing mere possession of a firearm in one's home kept for self-defense, like California's Assault Weapon Control Act, is so extreme, it would be very important if the state could at least point to a historical tradition of banning the simple possession of any kind of firearm. Unfortunately, the state is unable to find such a tradition. And listen, when the judge says that there is no historical tradition, he means it, as he pointed out. 
A historical twin is not unimaginable. It could have been the case that clearly states prohibited ownership of rifles and muskets with bayonet attachments or firearms capable of multiple shots without reloading. One could imagine the states prohibiting private possession of cannons or Gatling guns. There were no such restrictions. And ultimately, this complete lack of historical analogs or anything even remotely close to be unsimilar is the downfall of California's assault weapon ban, as Judge Benitez put it. To sum up, by the year 1900, there were 45 states in the Union. From before the adoption of the Second Amendment for the next 100 years, only New Jersey had a law prohibiting setting a gun, any gun, as a trap, and that law concerned the manner of hunting deer. So for all of these reasons, Judge Benitez has in fact struck down again California's assault weapon ban. Now there's a lot more to it. We'll do more videos on it. He goes through every possible historical analog that was offered by the state of California, systematically shreds all of it. Okay, now that's all the good news. Now I know this is what you're all wondering. Does that mean I can go back out if I'm in Washington, if I'm in California, I can go buy a semi-automatic rifle tomorrow? No, it doesn't, and here's why. And for those of you who've been geeking out on the Duncan v. Bonta case, here we go again. Judge Benitez said that there would be an injunction. However, that injunction has stayed for 10 days should the state of California want to appeal this ruling. The state of California is absolutely, positively, without a doubt, going to appeal this ruling. This ruling should then be appealed to a three-judge panel that would likely affirm Judge Benitez's decision. So we will then see the Ninth Circuit play the same old ridiculous games that they're playing on Duncan v. Bonta, except it on Bonk, throwing aside all the tradition and rules of the Ninth Circuit, and then try to sit on this case and age it out as well. This, I can mark my words on it right now, is going to play out exactly in the next couple of weeks, just like Duncan v. Bonta played out earlier this month. What needs to happen? Well, when the Ninth Circuit continues to play these games, the United States Supreme Court is simply going to have to step in and say, enough is enough. We're going to take review of these cases. You got to remember that the United States Supreme Court had GVR'd these cases back down to the lower courts, which is a nice way of saying, hey, you got it wrong. We're going to give you a chance to get it right. These courts have now shown an absolute un willingness to follow the rule of law and it is time for the United States Supreme Court to step in. This is a huge win, but it is a win that we expected. The real battle begins now in the rest of the Ninth Circuit and moving forward. The case once again is Miller v. Bonta. We'll link it all up down below so that you can geek out it for yourself so you can see today's ruling. In the meantime, if you got any questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is also down there in the description box. Now, let's everyone remember that part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.